If you are watching this, there is a fairly good chance that you are a conscious and sentient human being. But what exactly does that mean? Believe it or not, I am also a sentient human being. And I know this because I am having an experience. Or in other words, it feels like something to be me. I don't know for sure whether you are conscious, but I assume that other people must also possess something like my experience. Or in other words, I project my own experience onto other people. Hence, you are sentient because it feels like something to be yourself. But what exactly are these feelings? The basic elements of subjective experience are called qualia. Qualia include things like pain, feelings like happiness, anger, or sadness, the subjective perception of color, temperature, taste, smells, and sounds. Essentially anything that can be experienced or felt. Qualia are entirely subjective, and there is no way to know whether the qualia I experience are the same as the ones you experience. In fact, there is no way to actually describe qualia accurately through language. When we talk about the color green, we both just assume that we are talking about the same color. Or when I say that something tastes salty, you know what I mean because you have also experienced this sensation. The only way in which we can discuss qualia is if you have experienced the same qualia that I have, which is why when I say that my arm hurts, you know what I am talking about. But what if someone hasn't experienced certain qualia? It would be like trying to describe what seeing color is like to someone who is blind. Having never experienced color, the concept of color is unfathomable for someone who is blind. There is no way to describe the experience of color to a blind person in a way where they begin to truly understand what it is like to see color. For a deaf person, sound is also something which they cannot fathom. There is little they can do to imagine what hearing is actually like. This is because qualia are indescribable, and only direct experience reveals their true nature. No amount of language can actually convey the subjective experience of something. We might be able to use poetic language to convey what sadness or elation or apathy is like, but the actual experience itself is non-transmissible. This fact is really odd. It's as though there are aspects of the universe which we are all intimately familiar with, and yet we can't prove that they exist apart from our own point of view. The incomprehensibility of qualia becomes even more puzzling when we try to imagine the subjective experience of creatures other than humans. The philosopher Thomas Nagel argued in his essay, What is it like to be a bat? That reductionism and materialism can't really explain the mind. To make his point, Nagel asks us to consider what it would be like to be a bat. Bats are extraordinary creatures who, when flying in the dark, utilize echolocation to navigate and determine the distance between themselves and other objects. Something similar happens with us, but instead of using sound waves, we use light waves bouncing off of objects to create a mental map of our environments. But the fact that bats are able to map their environments using sound instead of light is not remotely similar to anything humans experience, or as Nagel puts it, bat sonar, though clearly a form of perception, is not similar in its operation to any sense that we possess, and there is no reason to suppose that it is subjectively like anything we can experience or imagine. This appears to create difficulties for the notion of what it is like to be a bat. Just as a deaf person has no understanding of the qualia of sound, we have no understanding of what a bat experiences during echolocation. Nagel's point is that materialism doesn't tell us what the bat feels, and so reducing everything to matter leaves out certain parts of the universe. Although we are excluded from actually knowing what certain qualia are like, I have always found it interesting to ponder what the subjective experience of other animals might actually feel like, since it reveals the wide diversity of mental experiences which can be found in the natural world. Some experiences are relatively easy to understand and imagine, while others are basically impossible to comprehend. Take goats for example. If you look closely at a goat's eyes, you will see that their pupils are rectangular, giving them a wider range of peripheral vision. Since our eyes face forward, and our pupils are circular, we can't see our surroundings as easily as a goat can. The eyes of eagles, falcons, and hawks 
are also impressive. Since their eyes possess many more cells than ours, the resolution of their vision is much sharper than ours, giving them the ability to see details which our eyes normally miss, as though they had HD vision. This is why these birds are said to be able to spot prey from up to 3 kilometers away. An animal with an experience of vision, which is nothing like ours, is the chameleon. Our eyes move together, so unless you cross your eyes, you can't look in two different directions at the same time, and our brains merge the images from both our eyes to create the perception of a single image. But the eyes of a chameleon can move independently of each other, and look in completely different directions. What exactly would this look like from a chameleon's perspective? Does a chameleon have two different streams of vision, and is its mind able to scan both streams independently? It's hard to imagine what seeing two different images at the same time would even be like while moving both eyes in different directions. And even in this demonstration, it is hard for your mind to focus on both of these videos simultaneously. There is even evidence that some animals experience time at different rates compared to us. Meaning relative to us, they experience the world in slow motion, or as though everything were sped up. The distance between our experience and that of other animals grows more extreme when we consider our perceptions. We call the visible spectrum of light visible because it is the range of light which produces the experience of color perception when we look at it. But there is no reason for this range of perception to stop between infrared and ultraviolet light. In fact, some animals are able to see more colors than humans can perceive. Birds, for instance, possess four color cones in their eyes, as opposed to our three color cones giving them the ability to see colors that we can't, including ultraviolet light. Just try to imagine what a completely different color looks like. This is impossible because your mind can't comprehend a brand new color without having first experienced it, and yet birds are able to detect colors that we have no understanding of, which, I think, is truly mind-blowing. Just as some people are colorblind, Nearly everyone is colorblind relative to birds. Additionally, there is a limited range of sounds we can hear, but animals like elephants are able to hear the low frequency sounds known as infrasound. Animals with a more advanced sense of smell than ours, such as dogs or bears, may be able to detect odors which, again, we are incapable of experiencing. This also reveals that it is possible that animals have different experiences even when sensing the same thing. For example, cats, because they are carnivores, don't possess taste receptors for sweetness, so sugar doesn't induce the same reaction for them as it does for us. The taste of sweetness is not contained within the sugar molecule itself, but from our brains reacting with our taste receptors whenever sugar is present. If your brain isn't wired to taste sweetness, you can't experience it. Which raises the question of how many different flavors the human mind is incapable of detecting. And is it possible to change our brains and taste receptors in order to experience more? There are also likely qualia, which aren't additions to the sensations we already experience, but probably feel totally different from anything we can imagine. It is hypothesized that many migrating animals navigate by sensing the Earth's magnetic field. In fact, we actually know how migratory birds do this, using a phenomenon of quantum mechanics. But although we know the physical mechanism by which birds sense the magnetic field, we don't actually know what this feels like from a bird's perspective. It might be similar to something we experience, such as our sense of balance or of acceleration, or it could be something which exists beyond our understanding. We are able to detect temperature, which we experience through our touch receptors. Some snakes are also able to detect temperature, but do it in a way which is different from us. Pit vipers can sense infrared radiation, which helps them spot warm-blooded prey, but they do so without coming into direct contact, using these pit organs, which function almost like eyes, except solely for detecting heat. Sometimes this is represented as being similar to a thermal camera, except this assumes that pit vipers experience color when they are sensing temperature. Since pit organs have no photoreceptors, it is hard to say how snakes actually experience this sensation. Our representations 
probably don't compare to the actual experience from a snake's perspective. Our inquiry can extend to many different types of animals, such as fish, insects, and jellyfish. But the further we get away from our own evolutionary lineage, the more incomprehensible things become. It is possible that the subjective experience of, say, an octopus, doesn't even remotely resemble anything we experience. Octopuses are extraordinarily intelligent and sentient, but the last common ancestor between them and us was probably a worm-like animal, which lived 750 million years ago. This means that their complicated nervous system evolved separately from our own. There are many facts about octopuses and other cephalopods like squid and cuttlefish, which make their mental lives fascinating to ponder. For instance, each arm of the octopus has its own brain, and can act independently from the central brain. It is almost as if an octopus is composed of nine different organisms, each with their own agency, one head and eight arms. What would it feel like to have parts of yourself that can act on their own without your direction? Actually, we experience something similar to this. Since our two brain hemispheres can sometimes act on their own, and against the priorities of the other, but having eight arms with their own free will is incredibly strange and alien. Since their eyes are so different from ours, it is possible that their visual image of the world is nothing like ours, and even their experience of pain might be different from our experience of pain, and feel qualitatively different. Octopuses don't possess any bones, allowing them to take nearly any shape and squeeze through tiny holes. This is in contrast to our own bodies, which are much more rigid and aren't nearly as malleable, making the experience of being an octopus utterly alien to what we are familiar with. It is important to note that this discussion was largely speculative, and it isn't clear how similar or different the qualia animals experience is to our own experience, and sadly we may never know. When we try to imagine what it is like to be a different animal, we essentially create a metaphor from our own experiences, but this doesn't really close the gap. It only allows our consciousness to get a sense of the complexity of the problem. But I think pondering these mental differences demonstrates just how amazing the phenomenon of sentience and consciousness really is, and it allows us to open our minds to the astounding mental lives of creatures other than ourselves.